when I talk about maths, what do you think of? Algebra, functions, trigonometry. As a fan of maths, and someone who dreams of studying mathematics at university in the future, I want to say that's not what I see. I always love to link math with literature and the arts. Yes, indeed, unlike literature and arts, sometimes maths has a definite answer or solution, while there are other times when they do share similar properties. When you're listening to the music, have you ever noticed any hidden mathematical features? Probably not. I want to propose that music has numbers and mathematics as its foundation. Well, you don't believe me? Let me show you. Simple musical notation is the most common example, using numbers to represent music notes, saving a lot, a lot of time and making it easier for composing and remembering the music sheet. In addition, the notes are not just randomly chosen. They are arranged in a sequence according to the differences in their frequencies. Well, I'm afraid I'm going to be a little bit nerdy here. It has been observed that when the frequency is multiplied by two, the note remains the same. And by the way, this is just an app that can show you the frequency when you pay a random note. So for example, this C note has a frequency of 260 hertz. And when this number is multiplied by two, which equals to 520 hertz, we end up also getting a C note, just an octave higher. Now comes the amazing part. As notes go higher, the frequencies gradually increase. But what remains the same is their percentage increase. Every time you move a semitone to the right, for example, this, or or the lateral frequency is always 6% higher than the previous one. Oh, so this is a graph of exponential growth, isn't it? And even more shockingly, if we plot the logarithms of the frequencies against the notes instead of their actual frequencies, the picture of the piano becomes linear. In addition to scales, harmonies in music are also closely related to mathematics. Different combinations of notes can produce different harmonic sounds. And these harmonies can be described using mathematical formulas. As a result of that, frequencies are inversely proportional to the length of the strings. And by the way, plucking or hitting the strings is just how the piano works, right? So for example, if you have two strings of two to three lengths, the frequency is going to be three to two, and this can produce a perfect fifth harmonic sound. For example, this C note again, and this G note. Uh. In which they together they produce perfect fifth, which just sounds like everything is calm and fine and everything's peaceful. And Two strings of length three to four can produce a perfect fourth chord. And this C note again. And they together they produce, which also sounds like it's delightful and joyful, right? So can't you see? Music has a fundamental reliance on numbers, patterns, and structures. And the kind of connection between music and math. It goes much beyond mere coincidence. Now, let's have a short rest and be prepared to be amazed by the romance of math. Do you know the sign sigma? In Chinese, it is used for qiu he, not only meaning calculating the sum, but also suing for peace and reconciliation. Do you know infinite non-recurring decimals, like pi? I feel that they are so firm and determined that they are always traveling forward, flowing on with an indomitable spirit, and they never turn around or repent. 
Do you know asymptotes? Don't you think that? Can you share this despair that it's continually trying to approach another curve, but just cannot meet it at any finite distance? Do you know multivariable functions? Don't you think that it's just like our whole life, that there's no unique solution, and we need to explore other solutions and, we, and expand the varieties as well? If you started to have a sense of awe, feel it. Let it fill your head and heart. And you might be able to draw this feeling out, like Wassily Kandinsky or Hermann F. Klint, who both uses geometrical shape to create art and visualize their thoughts and emotions. And in this way, the graphs and shapes in mathematics can be great examples to illustrate your change of thoughts, the change of your emotions, and your passion and love for the whole world. In Kandinsky's work, dots might be embodiments of openness, representing inclusiveness and infinite possibilities. Lines might emphasize their tenacity, their strength, their tension. And circles might be symbols of unity and eternity. And yes, there are always those symbols in art, artistic or literary works, but what about in maths then? You might never think of this, and you might not believe this, but there truly are connotations in math. So let's brainstorm about the number seven. What can you relate seven to? Well, it's a prime number. It's written as 111 in the binary system. It's also the number of days in a week. And these are all abstract ideas that can link seven to end are beyond the seven itself. I really like Sofia Kovalevskaya's quote that it's impossible to be a mathematician without being a poet in soul. In mathematics, we cannot avoid exploring the relationships between ideas, which in this case we link seven with factors, with the number two, and even with the calendar. And this is part of the meaning of math. Isn't it indifferent from literature and arts where we explore the relationships between objects and the world or past and future? I always love hunting for the connections between mathematics and literature and arts. And it just feels wondrous to switch my perspective to view the whole world. I can always spot a mathematical part in a piece of artwork. And I can discover philosophical ideas and create art through maths. Now I want to end my talk with an example of maths in literature, a poem, Parallels, by Eugene Guilevic. You cry into space, which has to separate you. You cry as loud towards that other space that you cut in half. As if you were, in all time, the only ones unable to meet. Thank you. <laughs>